So many people are surprised and excited to learn that you can make far more than just pizzas inside your pizza oven. Included in that is two beautiful dishes I'm going to share with you today, including this 35 day dry aged slice of ribeye. To complement that, we're going to make some beautiful brown butter, garlic and thyme potatoes, wedges. Now what I've done with the ribeye is salt it one hour before cooking it. It's important that the slice of meat, being so thick, comes up to room temperature before getting it in the pizza oven. Otherwise, we risk uh, getting too much color on the outside without cooking it all the way through. Now behind me, I've got two cast iron pans rattling away and getting screaming hot in the, uh, in the pizza oven. We've got the pizza oven right now at around 600 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. What that's going to allow us to achieve is a beautiful, gloriously golden crust on the outside of the ribeye and equally beautiful golden potato wedges. Now to check our temperature, you're going to want a, um, a steel or cast iron rod to grab the handle of the cast iron pan. We can see that it's really raring hot. We're going to put that aside for just a minute and we're going to get our other one, our larger one for the ribeye. So I've got the cast iron pan, it's super, super hot. It's been in the, uh, the pizza oven for around, uh, around five to 10 minutes. Uh, what we're gonna do is get a nice crust of black pepper on the outside of the ribeye before getting it started. And what you're gonna also wanna have handy is butter, thyme, and garlic. Now we've put a generous cracking of black pepper on the outside of the ribeye. We've got a beautiful, rearing hot uh, cast iron pan, and we're going to put the ribeye directly on. Make sure to drop it away from yourself as to not burn yourself. And we're gonna get that straight back in the oven. Now we're gonna put some oil into this pan. So what you want inside the cast iron pan as it's cooking in that oil, we're gonna add butter in a second, but we wanna add some garlic and thyme just to flavor that, uh, that butter. And we're going to then uh, take a spoon and spoon the, the herb and garlic butter over the surface of the ribeye. Now we're gonna add around two to three tablespoons of butter. It's unsalted, we're gonna uh, salt it in a minute. We've already added quite a bit of salt to the surface of the ribeye. So choose unsalted butter, we're gonna add that directly to the pan. And what that's gonna do is it's also going to cool down the pan so we're not adding garlic and thyme to a screaming hot pan. It's actually gonna cool it down just a little bit. If you'd like to come on over here, you're getting a beautiful crust on the outside of the ribeye. We're just gonna let that go. At this point, we're gonna get that garlic in there and the thyme, and be careful because it may splatter. And take a little minute to give it a little coating of butter on, side this, on, on the surface of the ribeye. You can put your herbs on top there, and we're gonna make a fountain of brown butter, and it, my goodness, does it smell good. And you'll see just how quickly this came to temperature. It's live cooking, it's alive, it's electric, um, and it's super, super fun to get some friends around and get cooking in the pizza oven. Now it's important that you get yourself a cast iron rod so we're not constantly reaching in as you might have seen me do a couple of times. So get your rod and it makes it super easy and safe to pull it out where you can then um, handle it with a thick, a thick uh, dish towel or an oven mitt. So at this point you've got an extreme heat still bubbling away in the pan, and we can use that hot butter to literally cook and sear the other side of the ribeye. Right now we've been cooking it for about eight minutes. So I'm gonna to go to about 10 or 12 minutes, depending on how you like it. I'm intending to serve it medium to medium rare. Again, this is a thick cut of ribeye, and it's gonna take quite a lot for it to get completely cooked through. In the meantime, what we're gonna do with our potatoes, we've got this pan nice and hot. We're gonna add around the same amount of oil, around two to three tablespoons of extra virgin or vegetable oil, and we're gonna get our potatoes in. Again, watch that it doesn't splatter. At this point, it's been about 10 minutes and it's a great time to add an extra log to the fire. 
So right now we're actually rattling around 700 degrees. Uh, I'm gonna try and get that up a little higher and get some nice golden crust on those potato wedges. And I'm gonna transfer that back to the pizza oven. So what we're doing here is we're basting the surface of the ribeye with that beautiful brown butter. It's actually starting to foam and it's getting a real nice nuttiness to the butter. And we've also got a really nice uh, garlic aroma and beautiful herb taste coming from the, the thyme. You could also use rosemary or even some beautiful sage. Some sage would be really, really nice with the potatoes. So we've pulled our potatoes out and it's a really nice time to add the butter. We don't want to add butter too quickly as we want to get uh, heat into the cast iron. The butter tends to cool it down just a little bit. So we're adding around two, two tablespoons of butter. That's going to add a really nice flavor and that similar beautiful nuttiness that comes through uh, with the beef. So stir it up a little bit. Again, add some sage, add some garlic. You can add some onions to this or even other beautiful root vegetables, radishes, um, some beautiful sweet potatoes or a little bit of uh, diced pumpkin or squash. So you see it's actually taking quite a long time to really burn this butter. It's actually, you're keeping an eye on it. You've noticed that I've checked it every minute. Uh, it's actually at a beautiful temperature. It's brown, but it's not burnt. You can see that it's got a beautiful brown color. Too far and it will go black and it will taste quite unpleasant. So we're gonna let that rest. I think we're gonna be pretty safely uh, around the right temperature. I've got a temperature probe and I'll tell you how how uh, hot the internal temperature is. So right now I'm gonna take the ribeye off the heat as to allow it to nicely rest. I'm gonna do so for about 10 minutes and it's just going to continue cooking through. I've got a temperature probe here. What we're aiming for is around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I've put a temperature probe in and it's just over 120, 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfectly cooked it's going to continue to cook slowly for around 10 minutes and I'm going to serve it hopefully medium. So we've let it rest for around 10 minutes we're going to scrape off the thyme and garlic it smells absolutely beautiful hope that you're going to really really enjoy this dish. We're going to transfer it across to our cutting board and we're going to cut it away from the bone. We're going to make sure we keep the bone and serve it on the platter that we serve to our friends and family it makes a real showstopper. Now, it wouldn't be a good host if I didn't taste it before serving it to my friends and family, so. Oh my gosh. Beautifully salted. It's got a beautiful garlic, lovely herby flavor. Really nice garlic, uh, sorry, pepper flavor. Really beautiful. I'm gonna finish it with some uh, beautiful flaked salt, some sea salt. It's a really nice way to add a bit of texture and really bring out those lovely flavors. Wow, do these smell incredible. Make sure you're draining the oil off and serve it as a nice hero platter right down the middle of the, middle of the table. Well, it smells absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait for you to taste this at home. I'm finishing it with a little bit of salt. Put that down the middle of the table with a nice cold glass of wine or beer. I cannot wait for you to taste this at home. I hope that you're inspired and uh, continue cooking up some really interesting uh, meal ideas in your pizza oven at home.